bring him all the praise that he deserves. Don't hold back, let it be heard. Come magnify him and glorify the Lord together. The Time Is Now is a really special song to us because even though it's the first song on the album, it was probably the last one, one of the last ones that we finished. We were meeting together one Monday before work. We're kind of doing our planning and preparation for the album. We're like, how do we start? How do we start this album? Like, where do we, how do we want to lead people on this journey? We had a rehearsal um, with the team. We played, played through a couple of songs, did some arrangements. And then at the end, I'm packing up, ready to go home, got my guitar, and then Tom's over on the piano coming up. There's just this melody I hear, and I'm like, it's like 10 o'clock, man, I want to go home. <laughs> Very sleepy. <laughs> so sleepy. And I just had this melody and this phrase. The phrase was kind of in my head throughout the rehearsal first. Since we had talked about it in the morning, I was just thinking like, man, what's something that's going to go, guys, we're here to worship, and we're here to worship now. Um, and so this phrase that just kept going on in my head was, the time is now. I couldn't get it out, it was really weird. Mm. And sat down at the piano and literally just started singing, the time is now to lift your song. I was like, oh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this, this, that kind of section of the song just started happening. Mm. And I was like, I saw Jay packing away, like trying not to make eye contact with me. I was like, you come here, <laughs> we're gonna write. Um, and then the rest of the song honestly just flowed and it's just, it's mm. this invitation of the time is now to worship, the time is now to lift your song, you're not here to watch, you're not here just to be a fly on the wall in this time of worship, it's, it's your time and it's our time to worship God together. Man, what an amazing way to start this album of setting people's focus yeah. of what we're here to do. And then at the end of the song saying, and Lord Jesus, you're welcome in this place mm. to do whatever you want. And to be honest, this is just a moment where we can honestly say and, and really felt like the Lord was just so kind and was like, here's, here's your starter. Yeah. Start with this. I so want people to experience that as they listen to the first song on the album. It's, mm. It starts with all of the team praying Mm. praying over, it was the first song we recorded on the day as well, and we were just praying that this would be worship, this would be about Him, this would mm. be about Him, this would be about Him. Mm. We've got like 30 seconds of just prayer, just people praying, and praying for people who are going to be listening to it mm. as well. And so I love that we start in prayer, I love that we start an invitation to people and to Him. Bring him all the praise that he deserves. Don't hold back, let it be heard. Come magnify him and glorify the Lord together. Don't look back, let it be heard. Come magnify and glorify the Lord together. The time is now to lift your song as all of heaven sings alone. Singing holy is the Lord, singing holy is the Lord. We're lifting high the name of names for you, our welcome in this place. Build your throne upon our praise, build your throne upon our praise. Bring all the praise that he deserves.
We both love a band called Switchfoot and they have a song called Souvenirs and the whole premise of the song is talking about souvenirs as like memories, as moments that you point back to. I've got my souvenirs, I've got my memories and so we thought that's a great concept and we've had so many times in our lives that we can point back to a moment of worship or a song or a, a time in church or something where God really met us and we thought we want to create souvenirs for people, memories that people go. God met me there. I guess the thing that we feel like, the souvenirs we want to create are songs, are moments of worship that people can look back to that have helped people grow in their love and their, and their faith in God. I know I've been so encouraged, like we get messages every now and then through the Facebook page or whatever, just from people saying how the song has encouraged them, how the song's been used in their church communities. And every time we get a message like that, it floors me, eh? I'm just humbled. I'm like, I kind of forget that these songs are out there in the open. And it's, it's amazing to think that songs that started, like a lot of them in this room, and now being sung in many other rooms and cars and all over the place where people are encountering God. Mm. Um, and I love that. Pretty cool, like the choir's amazing and it's kind of cool because like, you know, Jamie and Tom's at church, like normal people and then you come here and it's like, it's pretty amazing, it's an experience, and it's so cool to be with these amazing people. It's just like, mm. the family of God, just, just all together, it's really special. Everyone's just getting into it, and there's a lot of energy and a lot of excitement about this album and the work that the Souvenirs have done writing it, so just cool to kind of see it all being finally realised now, yeah. Oh, I just feel like fully unlocked today. Just seeing everyone worship and people be like, real. Um, so yeah, the words have just, I don't know, opened our hearts 
And it's just been so cool being around everyone and doing that together. Billion Voices was probably one of the first songs that was written, but the heart behind this one is really to exalt the name of Jesus. It's just pretty up the guts. <laughs> and we always love thinking about that the name of Jesus has been worshipped and exalted for generations before us and is going to be exalted and worshipped for generations past us. He is worshipped by so many people. Creation was made to worship him. And so, yeah, this song just kind of came out of those thoughts. I was actually driving home from, from town being catched up with someone and this chorus just literally happened in the car and this little like hook line, this little melody came to mind as well and I just started singing it out. It goes, it's gonna feel really weird without any music behind me, <laughs> <laughs> but it goes, ooh. And I sung the chorus out like, before I got home, I was just like, man, what is this? I was led in worship in the moment. I got home and my, my wife was already in bed. It was quite late. She's like, come to bed. And I was like, I'll be there soon. <laughs> but two hours later, I just had to finish, like had to unpack what, what this idea was. Mm. There's a section right at the end um, that we'll call the tag mm. uh, that, that was written during a rehearsal time. Um, we, were, we were playing through the song, putting arrangements and, and lines around it and and it was it was great and then we we just went to this this chord progression simple as four five four five and then Tom Tom starts singing out one day every knee will bow every tongue confess Jesus is Lord which is just straight out of the Bible whether people know it or not there's the day coming that they're gonna bow the knee and confess that he is Lord that moment feels really stand out to me, really, really beautiful, really captivating. Um, and I, I, I love it. I love finishing with one day, every knee will bow, every tongue confess. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. Mm. One day, every knee will bow, every tongue confess. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. The phrase like billion voices and name exalted all around the world was already kind of part of this other part of the song that was already developing. Imagine if the hook was voices singing this ooh. Mm. And so it's, it's not just like a throwaway ooh, it's yes. one of voices to carry and to start this song. The blazing sun and starry skies At your command they came to life And all the earth is made to worship you Let your name be exalted, exalted And all around the world forever Let your name be exalted
That song really became like the, the song that we kind of built everything off. We'd come out of a time of COVID and not really being able to gather. And I think there was a longing in our hearts to, to sing with a whole bunch of people. Like, There's just something about being in a room, shouting praises to God and not, not holding back. And so that's what really launched the, the thoughts around this album for it, for it to be a billion voices singing praises to God, all directed to Him. It's a big theme. It's a big theme, togetherness, um, coming together around Jesus and around worshipping Him. And so a billion voices just pretty much straight away, it was like, it should be the name. Yeah. It should be the name of the album. Mm. It, it captures everything so well. The sound of this room is probably terrible for recording, but amazing for writing songs. The reverb in here just feels amazing and there's something about yeah. worshipping and writing songs that are going to be sung with people. And so when you hear it in quite like an ambient, reverby way, it just feels awesome. <laughs> so we love writing in this room. Also, this is the church that we call home. And so being able to write songs for our community in our community place where we gather, it's just so special, you know. We used to pray in this room yeah. every week for about two, three years, mm. kind of through, th 
through beyond these walls and, and out the other side. And so a lot of the songs that you hear that were written in this room have either literally come out mm. immediately after a time of prayer or are just prayers that we've been praying copied and pasted into melodies. With some chords. With some <laughs> melodies and chords. Yeah. And we've just always written for our church community and because we love writing and God's put songs in our heart, but we've never had the goal of we want to record and to make a name or anything like that. It's just been, man, God's given us songs. How do we be good stewards of them? For good's a song that has really taken us by surprise. This song came out of, we started writing it in the first lockdown back in 2020. And um, we were writing over FaceTime and, and just one of the themes that I think was going on in, in our lives and, and in the world around us was there's so much uncertainty. Mm. It, like what's going on in the world? Oh, there's a lot of um, anxiety out there and, and people were struggling in their thinking and, and practically with their jobs. You know, so much stuff was up in the air. Just the passage that kept coming to mind was how God works things together for the good of those who love Him. Um, and he's always working away in the background, always working away in the unseen. And it felt like it ministered to us as yeah. we were writing it. It felt, like, it felt like the Lord was reminding us as we were writing that he is faithful. He is working things for the good. We felt blessed as we wrote it. But then to be honest, we kind of just put it on the back burner. <laughs> we're like, it felt like, yeah, this is a, co a cool song. Maybe it's just for that moment. We don't know. And then um, as we started rehearsing for this album, it, it um, it just started coming to life, eh? It really started coming to life. So when we say that we, we prayed that this would be a time of worship, the, the album recording, I feel like this was a real key moment where the Holy Spirit just ministered to everyone in the room. It was, it was beautiful. There was, there was tears um, and there were prayers. I, I, I remember people praying like, man, God, I want to take my shoes off. This is like holy ground right now. And it was, it was absolutely, yeah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It's not like a personal note. Um, I get through this thing. Trying to hold it. <laughs> Man, I just find it so crazy how when we worked on this song mm. and writing this, like you're thinking, Man, how cool would it be if this blesses other people, other people are ministered to by this song? And um, I won't go into full detail, but. Um, just been through a lot of like personal grief over the last couple of years. And the Lord really has ministered to me through this song. He's reminded me that he's faithful. Mm. He's reminded me that he's always working away in the background when I can't see it. I know sometimes you really feel the presence of God and sometimes you're like, God, where are you? But I know that he's working in the unseen. He's working where I'm not, mm. where I don't really feel him. As we were recording this song, it felt like this was the moment in the recording where the floodgates just opened and the Lord really ministered to us. Mm. I'd been holding on to a lot of kind of pain in, my, in myself. During the recording, I felt like God was saying to me, Tom, just let it go, just let it go. And I was standing there hearing God say that. Um, and I was like, nah, <laughs> nah, I'm gonna push through, Lord. We, we need to do this recording. I'm gonna push through. And as I was just standing there being stubborn to the Lord, my dad was actually in the choir behind and he had no idea that the Lord was saying this to me. And he just walked up behind me and he said, he just said, Tom, I just feel like God's telling you to let it go. And I was like, ah, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> and man, the Lord ministered to me. I was just reminded in a huge way that God is faithful. Yeah. He is always faithful. No matter what you're going through, Jesus will carry you. Mm. No matter who you are, Jesus will carry you. Our prayer is that you would hold on to Jesus because mm. he's the only one who's going to get you through life's, life's valleys, you know? And so, 
yeah, we pray that this song would remind people of that mm. and they would know that God is faithful. Mm.
these songs, like the lyrics of them are testimonies of moments, of moments of for our church, moments of the boys individually. Um, and it's like, oh, it's so special to then be able to see them encourage others as well. Whatever you're going through, Jesus understands. Whatever your circumstance, Jesus understands. He will carry you through. And I think no matter what's happening in your life, that people can relate to that, I think. Whether you know Jesus or not, like, that's, that's an incredible truth that Jesus is so kind and loves you that much that he will carry you. <laughs> that's precious. Just seeing the band bringing together the vision of, gosh, years of writing and um, just watching it fall into this moment where yeah, sorry, but there's just been moments where the Holy Spirit has just taken over. And this hasn't been a recording. Uh, this has just been, I think, an expression of worship. And it's been utterly humbling to be here. I came into this thinking, oh, wow, we're recording these songs. But I almost forgot, wow, the Holy Spirit shows up and he ministers. And I think a lot of people have been really ministered to today. So I'm going away full. We made Souvenirs as like a band, as a platform to do something with these songs that God was giving us. And it was, it was just us at the start. Like we couldn't, we couldn't do everything on our own. And so we brought some people in, but we've, we've built a team. And then this one, it just feels like it's exploded yeah. into, we're, we're better when we work with other people. There's a synergy there. There's, a, there's something that we can't do on our own when we reach out to others. And so our, I feel like our team is like 80 people strong yeah, now. Yeah. Um, and I pray that it keeps growing. KB, she is humble and incredible at keys. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible person. She's also a fantastic designer. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. She's designed our album cover with her husband, Jeremy, and they've done such an incredible job of, of translating what happened on the day and putting it into like picture form, graphic form of just like, it's all about him. It's all about yeah. him. It's just shining the spotlight on him. So Jeremy, I love this guy. He's probably the newest member on the, on the team, but oh, we've been missing him until he, he yeah. turned up. His guitar playing, his heart for Jesus, the first time I met him, he prayed this most authentic prayer of just, Jesus, you're beautiful. And I was like, this guy is gonna be my friend. <laughs> I love him. And you love the color of his guitar. I love the color of his guitar as well. <laughs> Nate Rapiner, oh my goodness, man. This guy is a genius. Yeah. Musically, this, one of the softest hearts to God. He's, he's had some incredible moments in his life and he's been through some hard stuff, mm. but his heart has always stayed soft to God and that's what I love about him. Mm. But he's, he's the genius behind all the music production. Souvenirs couldn't do what we do without him. Mm. He's amazing. Yeah, also want to just honor his work. He, he edited the whole album as well and that means like all of these huge files from recording on a whole day, he cuts them down, refi refines them, cuts out noise and makes them sound all together and cohesive. Mm. And so I really want to honor his work there as well. He's, he's Tunes amazing. all my out of tune singing. Yeah. He's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Abby. I feel like just recently the power in her vocal has just really come out and she's an incredible singer and there's one song in particular she does in this new album that just, it's her and I love her heart of worship. She's very, what you see is what you get, consistent and a very kind, generous person. Hattie, she's the other sister and man, her her voice is something else. Say eh? the amount of stories that you hear from people that listen to her voice and, and experience the presence of God is it's a beautiful voice, mm -hmm. incredible voice. She's humble, a beautiful worshiper. Hunter, Hunter's been one of my closest friends for the last few years. He was in my bridal party. I love his desire to go after truth. He loves the yeah. Bible, he loves the Word, and I feel like even if he didn't play anything on this album, his, his heart for the Word and, and championing what we do lyrically yeah. is awesome. Mm. I'm so grateful for him, eh? 
Jared, man, first of all, he slayed the recording table. <laughs> Jared was as crook as a dog. Yeah, he, he said was... he was the sickest he's ever been on the day that we recorded the album. He was taking naps between takes <laughs> and somehow still played in time. I don't know how he did it. He's more than Jared, time. Jared is one of the hardest working people I know. Yeah. One of the most genuine people I know. I love him. He's just such a great guy and such a joy to have on the team. He's probably one of the best drummers I know and could have tried to show everyone how amazing he was, but he hears a song and he goes, what's the best way I can serve the song rather than serve myself? And I love that about Jerry. And I have decided to lift my eyes. Johnny's the man. Mm. He had a child, <laughs> which makes his time uh, a bit of a thing. Mm. But the fact that he made so much time to rehearse and to practice and then MD on the day, which means that he was making all the calls of we, we're going, we're doing this, we're building here, we're coming in here. I'm so grateful for his work and for his groovy bass playing as well. Mm. Yeah, he's Mr. Consistent, eh? Yeah. You can yeah. always rely on Johnny. Definitely. Man, Nate Dell has an incredible mind. Like, he is one of the smartest, most like intellectual thinker, people, <laughs> person I know. And that comes across in the way he plays his guitar. He's always cooking up something beautiful eh, on, on that guitar. Yeah. And he just, the lines that he comes up with, often Jay and I in rehearsal will just be like, how did you think of that? He's an essential part of the team. I love his genuine heart. Like he has some genuine deep questions, but he always brings them to God. And he's not afraid to talk about them and worship through them. And yeah, I just love that about him, mate. Tom is one of my oldest, longest friends. There was a moment when we were leading worship together. I think I was 15 years old, Tom was 17, and we were leading worship together. And I just felt this strange sense from the Holy Spirit, or maybe it was just me, that we'd be lifelong friends. And more than just lifelong friends, but like, I really understand the way that the Bible talks about Jonathan and David's friendship, of how Jonathan really wanted to just like, he wanted David to just succeed and do, be the best he could be and, and, and just come alongside him. And I just always feel that way with Tom. Tom is an incredible ideas guy. Most of our songs start with Tom and then he goes, what about this? And then we come together and we finish a song together. But even just like creative thoughts on, what if we did a recording in the round, a big choir? All, all of that begins with Tom and I feel like we just feed off each other and uh, I love this man. Love him, like a brother. Jamie, man, where do I start, eh? Jay's like the best friend for me and I feel like Personally, he's been a gift from the Lord for me, for my faith, for just my life in general. For me as someone who tries to write songs and honestly I'm grateful to the Lord for this friendship. I don't know if I'd be the man I am today if, if Jay wasn't in my life. And to be able to do this together, to be able to worship the Lord and we've worshiped God in some crazy places, <laughs> in some places that just seems so random and, and we've had some incredible experiences together and then to be here in New Zealand and, and a part of this worship collective souvenirs, writing songs and it honestly just feels like a dream, eh? Mm. And, um, it's such a joy to do it with Jay and so Jay um, is an incredible singer, incredible singer. The, I know the presence of God moves through the way Jay worships and the way he leads. He's a powerhouse in that and, and very consistent in everything that he does. And so he gets things done and it's awesome. I love that about him, but yeah, great friend, great friend. Moving Ways We Can't Explain is a prayer before it's a song. We've been praying for years, literally years, for God to move in our nation, in our city, in our church. And 
we, we would pray over there in that corner um, once a week with a bunch of people from our community and we would pray, Holy Spirit, come. We pray for revival. And we had a, a, a song come out of that experience as well that was on our first album. And then this is almost like a continuation of that prayer. There's a line in this song which says, we still need revival. And just because we've sung about it once in a song, that doesn't mean that we're gonna forget about that prayer. And so we, we still need revival. One morning prayer time, I think we met at six or 6.30 or something. We, we prayed for an hour and I saw, I saw Tom, we basically said amen. Tom gets up, grabs a guitar, pulls it out and then starts playing the verse and the chorus, just bleh, out in one go. And it was just what we were praying. It was literally words that we had been praying and I was like, this is cool. So we started working on it. It really is just a prayer with music mm. to it. We really wrestled with writing this one around like some of it feels quite confronting. We're asking questions like, are we complacent? Are we tired? But we, we just really are longing for the Spirit of God to move. And so this song kind of developed over time and, and we were really wrestling with, is this, can, are we, can we sing this? <laughs> you know, is this something that we can sing as, as the body of Christ. But I think they are, they've been really healthy questions for us to ask ourselves. Mm. Um, and at, at the end of it, we just cry out. There's a part in the song that just asks the Spirit of God to rain down. And that kind of sums up our prayer is we just want the Spirit of God to rain down in our city, in this country, and in, in our church community, in our personal lives. We need the Spirit of God. really pray that it would prompt people to, to think about some of the questions that are asked in the verses, mm. but then also cry out for the Spirit of God to move. We're still going to pray the same prayer, I'm sure, for the rest of our lives, but imagine a move of God that isn't credited to any human, a move of God that only God can take the full credit for. Like, that's what we long for, that's what we pray for. Thank you. 
It's better when you do it together. Yeah. You know, it's better when, when there's more people involved, especially in worshiping God. Mm. You know, it's not reserved for it's not reserved for the worship leaders. Worshiping God isn't reserved for the the people that can play an instrument or write a song. It's mm. it's for the body of Christ mm. to come together. A hundred percent. I feel like it's been a journey for me though. Those souvenirs in my life um, of when I think back to worship in my teenage years is like me in a room door closed, me and Jesus. And it was beautiful and I learned so much mm. and I wrote songs and most of them were rubbish. But from that point, inviting mm. people in, including people like Tom to go, here's a song, what do you think? Which is quite a vulnerable thing with, with something you've, you've created. At first it's like, this is my baby, don't change yeah, it, oh, yeah. don't call it ugly. It's like, but when you <laughs> do that, even if it is, even if it is <laughs> but when you do that, and you, and you bring someone in, they begin to, it becomes better than what you can do on your mm. own. And so I think when you do that with a team of musicians, a big choir of people singing, a bunch of te technical people who think in ways that I can't or I don't, you get something beautiful. And so that I'm really pumped with what's come out the other side of this because it, it may have started behind closed doors, but it's mm. about the people and it's about us worshiping God together. In every season, we were in Tom's lounge and we were 
trying to finish off a song called No One Like Our God. And we just kind of had this other idea come up, this, this chord progression. And it was quite slow, it was quite ballady <laughs> um, at first. Mm. And as we progressed through some lyrics and, and the theme of this song, it started to become a bit more of a, a celebration, yeah, a uh, bit more of a, man, what the enemy made for evil, what he tried to do for evil, God turns it around for good. Like That's something to celebrate about, mm. celebrating his faithfulness and, and just crying, crying out, I'm going to trust you. And then we finished the whole song literally in the lounge yeah. that afternoon. And when we took it to the team, this one carried a lot of like excitement. For yeah. us, it felt, I feel like this was a song that kind of turned a corner in the way we wrote in a yeah. way. Like we're, we've always kind of battled to write faster songs. Mm. And this song felt like, man, we can sing incredible truth and have a lot of fun. Our prayer for this song is that it would encourage people and give people words to trust God. We pray that people would declare that they can trust Him. And even if there's like really hard things going on in, in their lives at the moment, our prayer is that people would trust God. And so that's why we've called this song Trust. In every season God, I know you are good and complete Every plan has a purpose and reason And I will trust what you say And I hear you calling I will step out of comfort believing Though the path is unknown, you are leading And I will trust what you say Cause what the enemy meant for evil You turn it around, you turn it around I know that you are faithful You're working it out
we felt there's so much worship music out there. So many churches are producing stuff and um, there's so many like worship artists putting out music and, and, it, and it's great. And I think we, we, hit, a st- we hit like a, a season or a, it was like a, I don't know, a moment in time after the last album where we would sit down to write and just nothing would happen. Mm. And we were just like, man, what's, what's going on? Like, why can't we? Felt like everything we were trying to produce just <laughs> was, was average. Mm. And it was really humbling. It was so yeah. humbling. It was like, wow, the Lord really is the one who graces us with these songs. I feel like he just wanted to strip us back Mm. and be like, I'm the one who's going to give you these songs. If I want these songs to be sung, they're going to be from me. Mm. And so we we were having conversations like, is this, do we stop souvenirs? Were we just one lot of songs, one album done? Mm. And we were seriously considering it. We were like, maybe it's time to (laughs) hang up the guitar, you know, (laughs) in in, in that sense Mm. with souvenirs. But we just started praying like, Lord, If you do want to give us songs, we don't just want to add to the noise of what's already out there. We want it to be genuine. We want Mm. it to be from the heart Mm -hmm. and and filled with the power of your spirit. Mm. And so we came out of that place, these Mm. songs. And honestly, man, like all these songs, it just felt like the Lord was so kind and just the floodgates opened and we were trying to keep up with songs. I feel like really grateful that um, the Lord stripped us back before he gave us these songs. Mm. So that now I really don't, I know for, both of us say we don't mm. feel like we're the owners of these songs. Yes. Be blessed, be blessed. We will worship your name. First time I heard Be Blessed, Tom hadn't shown it to me yet, but he starts playing it in a, in a rehearsal time, and I was like, Oh, there's something special about that. That's beautiful. Got my phone out to record it just so he could listen back to it later. He'd already done that. But it's so simple. It's so, it's so singable that it, it felt so fresh. It came out of a time of, um, I was just at home. I think it was at my parents' place with, um, with my sister and, and we was jamming. This chorus just came out and I was, man, I think I sat on it for like an hour just worshiping God. Mm. And I just kept singing that, be blessed, be blessed, we'll worship your holy name. And I was like, man, this, why does this feel so fresh? Yet I'm not really saying too much. <laughs> be blessed, we will worship your holy name. The psalmist constantly tells us to bless the Lord. It's such a big theme of the psalms, right? And to bless the Lord through the good times, to bless the Lord through the hard times. Mm. And so I really wanted to capture some of that as well, eh? Love, like, through all the things that you have done, we'll bless you. Mm. Um, and anything that's yet to come, good or bad, will still bless you. Mm. And all creation will bless you. Mm. And our prayer for this song is that no matter what kind of church setup you've got, whether you've got someone on a guitar or someone just on a piano or whether you've got a full band and, and all that, anyone can sing this song. Mm. And so we just pray that this song is like useful for the church body to, to yeah. bless God. Be blessed, be blessed. We will worship your holy name. Be blessed, be blessed. We
So different from another type of recording, right? That's just about the sounds and um, you know the quality. It's about that too, but it's obviously mainly about Jesus, and I think that's just what makes it so incredible. I love that this is real worship. Like this isn't a production. We're actually worshiping God, and it's just coming through um, so prevalent. Um, it's not an act, it's not a performance. And so yeah, it's just awesome to be able to come to something like this and actually worship God while you're actually producing something. I can't wait to be, like have another 20 or 30 years on me and have that much more experience and just more time reading scripture and talking to the Lord mm. and knowing him better and then coming to space like this and worship him. Yeah. I look across at, you know, at some of the, um, the more senior people here. I was going, man, like they know Jesus and you can see it in their worship and that's something for me to look up to. I've, I've just been reflecting on that. It's a real privilege that they've brought us into it. Um, that it's not just th those guys, although they are fantastic, but actually that they wanted it to be so much richer than that and they wanted to bring people in. Um, it's been such a privilege and uh, yeah, I think they've, they've really just been such, given such a gift, not just for the music, but for the words as well that you were singing, but proclaiming such truth. I feel like there's a really fine line to walk, especially when it comes to things like recording, cameras, um, big productions and stuff like that, like to be able to record a whole album, it, co it like costs money, yeah. um, but, but it's, it's a real big ordeal. And if we just rushed into, okay, we're gonna do a new album, let's start writing songs. Yeah. I feel like we'd just, 
we'd, it would be making it about ourselves and what we can do and what we can bring. If we just pushed through those times of like, God's just not giving mm. the songs, or, or we have something, but it's just it's not very good, and just pushed into, we need to do another album, we need to get content out there, it would just be second rate as well. Yeah. And I don't think it would be honouring to God. And I think it would be way more about us than about Him. Yeah. And I think in the humbling process and the reset kind of process, we've got something really cool. And I can say it's, it's beautiful and this album is genuinely, I can't believe how amazing yeah. it sounds and feels because I don't feel like it's mine. Mm. I've, I've had to struggle a lot of my life with my identity being in what I do, especially when it comes to worship and music, and to put it on the altar and go, this might never happen again. Is that okay? And to go, yeah, mm. yeah, genuinely. If I'm stealing from your glory, God, yeah. take it. Take it. Mm. Like, sacrifice it, burn it up. I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. And I know that I'm going to have to do that daily yeah. and I'm going to have to do that in big ways and in small ways in the future as well. But that time and that process was so key to where what we've ended up with. It's almost like the pruning of, of those sorts of things has come has been really fruitful in the mm. other end. Yeah, I mean, we even joked about, maybe we should go start a company that builds fences. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom can teach me how to do that. Because <laughs> these hands have not seen much labour. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it was, for, like, I know for me personally, yeah, that's similar to Jay, like, God really had to reshape my thinking around yeah. who I am. And before I put out anything, um, he's already pleased with me. He already loves me. Yeah. I'm not Tom the songwriter or worship leader. I'm just Tom the, the, the child of God, mm. you know, and, and I'm a worshipper. So, yeah, I feel like, man, I've just been pulled right back to the foundations eh, mm. of, of who we are. And so this song's kind of like a, a reminder. It's, it's a subtle <laughs> reminder, but to, to have joy, yeah. to have joy and to be joyful for all that he's done. Where would I be if it weren't for your son? As followers of Jesus, we have so many reasons to celebrate. Like when I think about what he's done for me, he died for me, he rose again for me, he was thinking of me, and he's, he's coming back one day. And that is, a reason to celebrate. One of my kind of life verses, something that I always come back to is, is John 10.10. 10. In the second part of that, Jesus says, I've come that you may have life and life to the full. And what I love about that is, yes, that's talking about eternal life with him forever, but it's also talking about right here and now. And I think following Jesus should be the best kind of life. And, and we can be quite forgetful as the church. Yeah, this song came out of um, a time that a time of worship that I was leading and it just felt really like, I don't know if you've been a part of worship times where it just feels like we forget the incredibleness, whether that's a word, of the words that we actually are singing. There's a, there's a few lines in there to help us rem mm. remember what it is he's done. Like, did you know that you're saved? Did you know that you're loved? And, and did you know that he's coming back? Mm. And so that's what this song, that's what this song's about. Did you know that we are saved? Did you know that we are loved? For freedom he set us free, so freely we can sing. I just came out of this time of worship reflecting on that, just thinking like, man, why did it feel so dead? I went into the auditorium next door and sat down at the piano and this chorus idea came out. It was just like, oh man, I just wanted to like celebrate and have joy, you know? And it, it kind of came out of, probably to be honest, came out of a bit of frustration of the room feeling quite dead. I was like, we should be joyful. There's this theme of childlikeness on this yeah. album that has come through yeah. time and time again to just come before him as, as our dad. A kid does not care what people think of it. If you say, if you're happy and you don't clap your hands, what are they gonna do? 
Mm. Like, they don't care. They don't care. And, the, and I think we get bound up by what other people think of us sometimes in the church. And Jesus came that we should have life and life to the full. And so that's why I love singing this song. Mm. And, and it was definitely a highlight of the day. Mm. Lots of people, lots of people kind of said, when's joy coming up? Mm. When's joy coming up? This just feels fun. Yeah. It feels weird. Like, it feels really different to all the other songs we've written. Mm. There's even a lot of back and forth within the team of like, this, this, this doesn't even feel like us. Like, should we even put this on the album? And now to think of it not being on the album feels really weird. Oh my gosh. And so I think we're like, we're so excited. Get a bit of joy back into the body of Christ and just see what this song does.
life with Jesus was never meant to be stale. Like if, you, if you're genuinely following and pursuing Jesus mm. as a disciple, you're going to be learning, you're going to be growing, you're going to be changing, you're going to be becoming more like him. Like n- new levels, bro. Yeah. New levels. <laughs> new levels. <laughs> Every day. Yeah, and so this song was, um, felt like another quite different one for us to write. We were here in the foyer, but this is such a fun place to write. Um, and so we were working away on some, some other stuff. I think we're trying to write like, I think we're trying to finish maybe like a slower kind of song. Eh? Yeah. And it, just was, it felt like we were just hitting roadblock after roadblock. And then this song just, <laughs> man, it came out of nowhere. And then Tom, Tom goes, I gotta go to the toilet. Walks to the toilet, which is behind us, and just goes, no level. I was like, what is that? That's epic. I love it. And then, and then you came back. I, we were playing. We added some chords to it and some 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 words behind it. And it was just fun. So like fun. marching around this room, just having so much fun singing singing this chorus. In Jesus Christ, we come alive. In Jesus Christ, you're taking us a new. The rest of the song kind of came from that, like, new levels. We did it, we went, what does that mean? Mm, yeah. And actually, life, like, the, the verses ended up just building around this kind of, like, I've decided to follow him, so what does that mean? I've decided to, to lift my eyes to him and to pursue him and follow him and trust him and everything. That means he's going to take us to new places. He's going to change us. And then when he does take us to those places as we follow him and continue to take steps forward in our faith and our life with Jesus, mm. We experience new joy, yeah, man. new life. We come fully alive in Jesus Christ. And that's what the bridge talks about. And mm. it's, it's such a celebration of this new life that we get to experience here on earth mm. as followers of Jesus. It's not meant to stay stale. We're not meant to stay in the same place. We're meant to follow him every step of the way. Um, and what an exciting life that can be. And I have decided to lift my eyes And I have decided to live my life I want to follow you side by side You are the way, you are the life You're taking us to new levels We will follow you all the way You're taking us to new Follow you. 
There's a few songs with themes of just trusting God in, in whatever situation you're in, 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 in the unseen, in the valley, um, and when it's good. And so I, I really pray that people who are, who are feeling that, who are feeling like they're in the valley, who are feeling like they're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, that they'll experience the faithfulness of God and they'll trust Him. They'll trust Him. They'll trust Him, whatever's going on around them because of His faithfulness, because of what He's done before, that they'll trust Him. And we've also got themes of, of coming before the Lord in childlike faith. I love being a Christian. I feel like it should be the most fun, exciting, life-giving way to live ever. And sometimes I feel like the church forgets what Jesus has done for us and that he came to give us life and life to the full. And so I'm, I'm praying that people rediscover this, this childlikeness coming before him just like, Dad, like hands out, um, arms raised and just like, pick me up, you know, like a, a kid doesn't need to prove anything. They just come before their dad. And so, yeah, I'm really praying that people discover, um, discover that. So many of us start out our relationship, our, our walk with, with, with Jesus so passionately and, and devoted and wholeheartedly and we're like all in. I've seen over the years um, with, with, with people that it often kind of just peters off a bit. Um, and I've noticed that in myself, like there's times where I'm just so sold out and so wholeheartedly in love with Jesus and then there's times where I overcomplicate things. Mm. I probably get a bit tied up in things that don't really matter. And my faith suffers because of that. And it really saddens me when I watch other people go through that and when I watch other people throw away their faith because mm. I just feel like they've over overcomplicated some things. So this song really came out of a time where for me personally, I, I felt myself getting to that point. I felt myself starting to overcomplicate things and actually my faith was suffering because of it. I was bringing things into question that, um, that the Lord had already given me answers on. And I just felt like God was calling me back saying, come to me like a child, mm. come to me like a child. And this chorus and um, chorus idea came out of, I just wanna be like a child with you, with everything you say, Lord, I'll do. And yeah, that really ministered to me in that time. And I think I, think I brought and it And it to really you, ministered yeah. to me as well. Like mm. it, it as soon as Tom showed it to me, I, I thought this is really special. There were, like there was a couple of things that we worked on lyrically and the odd thing here and there, but I played that pre-chorus and that chorus just over and over again on my own because I wanted to pray those things as well. I think that's a universal thing for, for Christians is that we, we, we so easily complicate things. And I just wanted to, to sing and, and, and shout really loudly, take me back, take me back to the start where you just had my heart completely. That's it, that's it. So Hattie sings this song on, on the album and, and there's, just, there's just some purity about her voice oh, man, yes. um, as she sings this that just, it, it suits the, the song Perfect, so well. Perfect, yeah. There's this, this section at the end of the song where the choir just sings, like a child, like a child, or like a child. And then the, the bridge comes back on top of that and it's like this call and response, take me back to the start where you have my heart completely, like a child, where I do what you say, trust and obey completely, like a child. Like it's just, it's just uh, it didn't feel like these moments came from us. This is such a spirit-led creative moment. I just, I just loved how it came together.
Take me back to the start where you read my heart completely. Where I do what you say, I'll trust and obey you fully. Take me back to the start where you read my heart completely. Jesus, I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours. Take me back.
when it came to thinking about how do we, what order should we um, record songs or, or put them on the album, uh, it was so, so clear that we should, mm. Jesus Loves Me should follow like a child. Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus Loves Me, This I Know uh, has such a special place in my heart. This song has been sung, I don't know, in how many homes over the years, you know, like I feel like it's a song that every child growing up within the church family is mm. probably aware of this song. And I love the simplicity of this song. I love that it's um, Jesus loves me, this I know. And the, the Bible tells me so, you know. My nana um, had dementia and she was in, she was in a home um, and my granddad was living there at the same time. Both just such beautiful worshiping hearts. They both loved the Lord wholeheartedly. Mm. And with dementia, you lose a lot, a lot of your memory, you lose people's names and pretty much everything in life, your, your brain just forgets about. She was still able to remember the words of this song. And I remember just being blown away that this incredible, simple truth, mm. she would sing every night before she went to bed with my granddad at her side. And I remember one night being with Nana um, next to her bed and um, just singing the song before she went, went to sleep. I was like, man, that, just what incredible lyrics. It really ministered to me. And, I got home that night and a, f a few more verses, like verse ideas came out. So I just really wanted to have more verses and more, more lyrics to sing with it. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, the, those verses came out of that time. I think it's an incredible thing to never become numb to. And no matter how old you are, Jesus loves me, this I know is an an amazing truth. I love this song that the, the choir starts this song off. And just to hear this this beautiful sound of, of friends and, and, and family, like actually your family who um, have, have gone through that time together, ministers to me, eh? And then it just it just grows and, and dynamic and and you end up turning it back around and and when I look into the eyes of Jesus, when I stand before him, this is what I say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. And it's just, it's an awesome song. It's a beautiful song. And yeah, I'm, I'm so, so blessed by it. Jesus loves me with his life that he even chose to die. On the cross he thought of me, now my song shall ever be. Yes, Jesus loves me.
Have you ever thought about or imagined that moment when you first go to get to heaven? What it would be like to enter into the throne room of heaven, hearing, I don't even know how many people, I don't even know how many angels, but hundreds, thousands of voices around the throne of Jesus worshiping him. For me, just thinking about that sound, what it would look like, the magnitude of like the size of the place that it must be. I, I, don't, I just can't even wrap my head around it. It's such an incredible picture that I know we're both always just marveled at. And we often talk about when we come to write songs, it's just like, man, what, what is it like in heaven right now around the throne? of God worshiping and in Revelation 5 you get this little this little glimpse this little peek behind the curtain of this song that's being sung in eternity and for eternity and it's holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty and I often think like what what's the melody like of that song what is it I don't know that there's so many songs that have been written about this this scripture and there's something about when we when we get to the bridge in this song and it's all heaven bows in worship, all eyes are on the throne and, and that, that melody just captivates me and takes me right there, takes me right into the throne and right into that place. This song is just kind of talking about that song that's being sung in heaven and then, and then we, we go, right here and now we can join it. Yeah. And so it's a journey towards that kind of heaven and earth coming together, singing holy is the Lord. I can't wait for that day when we get to be around the throne singing it, but we just couldn't, we couldn't wait. So we wanted, we wanted to start <laughs> now. And it's just such a simple chorus that just, mm -hmm. the aim of it is to lift the name of Jesus higher and higher and higher. What will it be? Standing before, joining no head, 
The Word of God became a man and what we deserved went through his hands. Like, 
Oh, that hits me every time. Yeah. Every time. I honestly don't know where to start with the song. It just feels like such a gift. We were in this in this foyer. This melody just just came. And we were like, huh? <laughs> like, what is this? Yeah. Like, where's that come from? And it was just a melody for a while. It was almost like God just just gave us something, but it was just like a tease, like a straight from Him. But then, what are you going to do with it? It felt like we were like embarking on this journey. Like that melody has a real journey mm. kind of sense to it, and that honestly captivated us. Mm. And it was probably one of the first times that we that this melody came and we didn't really know what to do with it. Yeah. We were like, this feels like uncharted territory. It, yeah. feels, it feels scary to put our ideas on this melody that's been given to us. Mm. And so we wrestled with, where does this song want to go? I was listening to the voice memo of it and after after maybe 10, 15 minutes, you know, what if we just told the story of the whole of the scriptures? Which is like yeah. maybe ridiculous to try and embark on. It took time, but we started on formless, formless and empty, the earth was awaiting the word. And we in the recording we both go, follow that. Yeah. <laughs> what what comes next after that? And then we we opened up the Bible to page one and just followed it. And then mm. these lyrics just started to come yeah. of, of it, it, I can't. Just walking through the story. I couldn't attribute the writing process to us because it just felt like, like heaven and earth were intertwined. I'm like, I didn't come up with that. No. What we deserve went through his hands. Yeah. Like, oh, that, I, got, I, I burst into tears whilst writing this song. It felt like truths that I knew in my head dropped down into my heart as I sung it. When we sung, you would, have, you would have planned to save us, though we were the ones who rebelled. That's not from me. Like, I didn't write that lyric. God gave us that lyric. I felt the weight of the sin mm. and what happened in the fall. But then, to, but then to go and talk about Jesus immediately after, there in a stable, a virgin gave birth to the way very intentional word. God, the creator, now clothed in the skin that he made. The word of God became a man and what we deserved went through his hands. Like, oh, that hits me every time. Every time. This song went on a big journey to complete. The initial idea of walking through the story of the plan of God created, humankind rebelled, God kept his promise and saved us, and then one day he's going to restore us fully. That kind of initial idea, the skeleton of that was mm. there, and to give it body and flesh took quite a while. Yeah. To think that people who don't yet know Jesus can listen to the full story of the Bible in the space of, I think it's nine minutes, 52 or something. <laughs> just, I love that. Just feels like such a, a gift for us personally, and we pray that it's a gift for people that don't yet know Him. And then when we get to verse four, that He's coming back. He's coming back. It didn't end in the grave. It didn't end in, in just him going off to heaven and we're just going to meet him there. But he's returning one day to restore everything and we're going to worship him forever. And so we finish this album in all glory, all glory, all glory to God forever. And I love that. I love that. I love that. I wish this song was uh, hours and hours long because we just could keep, keep on singing it.
What a saviour. Mm. What a saviour. He deserves all glory forever.
kingdom of God and renewing the earth. He's coming back to rule and reign. And every time we shout his name, we'll hail the Lord, we'll hail the King, we'll ask you. My hope and my prayer is that this would 
bring people back to the purity of worship. And people would encounter the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. They would learn how to worship God with their whole being. It would inspire other people to worship in the quiet place in their rooms. Mm. It would bring congregations together to lift all their voices up to God. And just that there would be stories of people that are and feel like they're in valleys, the Lord meets them through these songs, and people that are on mountaintops, the Lord meets them in these songs. And yeah, I just pray that these songs bless people, but most of all, bless the heart of God. Mm. Hey, thank you so much for listening to this album and coming on this journey with us. I, I pray that some insight into, into the behind the scenes of how these songs came about um, make the album come alive even more. We, we pray that this, this album blesses you. We pray that these stories bless you and, and you fall more and more in love with Jesus every day. Yeah, and we're just so grateful that um, you would take the time to even listen. And more than that, we really pray that these bless your church communities mm. as well and that we um, we do right and we pray that these songs are usable in, in your churches, and but also just in your homes, in, in your bedroom with your guitar. Um, worship your heart out and we pray that these songs draw you closer to the Lord. Mm. So, man, it's been such a joy doing this, this album and um, we really do pray that it, that it blesses every person that listens to it. So, mm. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. We love you guys. Mm.